So on this week's episode right. of Be More Super, the podcast, again, I'm super, super excited because Superman and Lois are breaking all barriers and is doing so well in the US and in the UK. And and next guest this week is from Superman and Lois. It's Wule Parks. Wule, welcome to the show, sir. Cool. Thank you for having me, Brian. How are you doing? You know what? I'm doing all right. It's so warm here in the UK at the moment, and we're not used to hot weather. So it's it's about 30 uh, degrees Celsius today. So literally everyone is, is move, moving slightly slower. <laughs> you know, it's like literally we're all turning to lions. So once it gets dark, I'm sure that everyone's going to wake up. Um, yeah, but no, yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm doing OK. Um, so before we jump into the awesome questions about your character, and working Mm -hmm. on on the show like i've been asking a lot of my guests you know the last two years have been challenging to say the least um Mm -hmm. so how have you kept positive and moving forwards during these difficult times over the last two years you know it's a really really good question you know for me um i'm sober i've been sober for coming up on 16 years at this point so I'll tell you what helped for me get through it is uh aa moved very quickly online like, like, I didn't know what Zoom was until the day after the shutdown. I, I think they announced it here in, like, um, March 15th. And within, like, 48 hours, meetings were on Zoom or whatever. So I was just doing meetings every day. That really helped to ground me to still stay connected to people. Um, you know, I'm a person where I I like physical activity. Like, like you know, I've been working out a lot since I was a kid. Um, and But for me, it's gone from just not, you know, it's not just like, you know, obviously aesthetically, it's nice to look good. It's more about a mental release, a mental decompressant. Mm. So, you know, pick back up running. I, I, I stole any weight I could find because you couldn't find a way <laughs> uh, just to do that. You know, go outside for walks. Um, but I mean, as far as continuing to go right now, I'll tell you, I I also, I cut out the news. I, I cut out all this. I, I, I can't, you know, we're so polarized right now and I just can't deal with it. I, I, I like to focus on the people who I know, who I, who I love, who love me and sort of just, you know, really focusing more on quality rather than quantity. And, and that's been a big thing for me is just uh, having good people around just because the world's kind of going crazy uh, and I don't need to be a part of it anymore. And congratulations for being so sober for that amount of time because me, me pers- personally, I don't really drink because I would rather have a cup of coffee um you know then then have a drink and you're right it's all about your mental state and your mental well-being mm-hmm. and how you see things which 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 i think is awesome um but yeah. let's talk about your iconic character because for people that don't realize that seeing the show um john Hen- henry irons is quite an iconic character from the comic books yes. after the death of superman he gets in- introduced um i think i've got um a picture there we go yeah, on the screen um so it's quite i i iconic first of all how did the part come about for you and what did you think about going for that role well it's funny okay so originally that wasn't the role that i was told you know like i went in it was just a regular audition um uh and and the sides you could kind of tell they seem to be scaled towards lex luther you know like like and it was a fake name it was like brad smith or something whatever something generic <laughs> But, but based on the size, I'm like, oh, this is Lex Luthor. So, so I went in with that mindset, uh, uh, and I approached it that way. And, it, you know, it's um, they have a rapper for who casts, like, a lot of the CW, um, you know, Berlanti shows. They do a great job over there. And so I went in, and, you know, I just did my job. I, um, you know, I, I had the audition, and then I had a callback with Todd. And I'm a person where I, <laughs> my friends make fun of me. I'm kind of a bad actor insofar as, like, I don't I don't know producers names. I don't I don't know who everyone who everyone is. I treat everyone the same. So my goal my goal is to go in and just do my job and move on. So I didn't realize it was Todd. Uh, uh, I just went in. Uh, you know, I, I had the call back. And, and then that was it. And I left and then I got the role based on that. So uh, it was kind of crazy how quick it was. Um, but then obviously, you know, shutdown happened. We were supposed to shoot our pilot, I think, in April of 2020. Obviously, COVID occurred, and uh, and then they postponed it. And then during the break, because uh, we started shooting, I think, in October, um, oh, during the break, Todd called me, and he said, hey, you're going to want to know what really is going on. You're not like Luther. You're going to be Steel. And I was like, oh, my God. And, you know, it was, it was amazing, but I had to then shift my perspective on how the character needs to be played. 
and you've definitely leveled up from the Shaq O'Neal uh, portrayal <laughs> of of, of steel uh, because anyone anyone around my age i'm 43 so literally i can remember steel com- coming out and at the time i thought it was awesome but then you know you definitely um leveled up that's all i'm going to say so how secretive was the all you know how secretive was the whole process because i met tyler uh, literally just after he did elseworlds and there mm-hmm. was all the rumors about the show and everything like that of uh, being developed and he wasn't giving anything away so how secretive was it once you you know came on as your character to keep everything quiet you know for me it w- it's, it's interesting um like i think i was one of the last ones cast as far as series regulars are concerned because if they started casting i'm sure earlier on uh maybe late 2019 early 2020 but by the time i got it everyone else had been cast i think except for um uh adam adam Rainey, who plays morgan edge because uh, i think he got cast over the break so like again my process was a lot easier you know they were secretive in so far as what the role is but you know we knew the show was coming they were already i think it started announcing casting and all that it was going straight to series so it was the process was actually okay for me um uh it was just what was funny about it was it, it was you know the idea was that captain luther was going to be the reveal so so then when i found that it was steel it was really easy for me to keep it like you know quiet because Everyone's like, who are you playing? I'm like, I can't say, <laughs> but he, he's bald and all this <sighs> stuff. So then the whole joke became, I was kind of like playing like, oh, okay, I'm playing Lex Luthor, but not really, you know, I couldn't say it. So no one even thought of Steel because the whole hide, hide you know, the hiding of it was, uh, you know, Lex Luthor. So it was actually really easy for me. But w- which which one would you have preferred? I know obviously you're doing an, a, a stellar job as uh, John you. Irons, but which which part would you have wanted the most? Would you have wanted to take a good stab at Lex Luthor? Uh, I mean, you know, the actor in me, sure. But then the problem is then you get compared to everybody else. Because I will tell you, that's the thing I was apprehensive about. Because obviously I know Michael Rosenbaum's considered like the gold standard as far as TV is concerned. You know, and like obviously Gene Hackman back in the day and all those things. And then you have, um, um, oh my God, from Two and a Half Men. I'm blanking on his name. I know it feels so horrible. Um, either way, like he was doing it on Supergirl. Um, and, and, and so for me, the thing I was apprehensive about was the idea of getting compared to everyone else and not wanting to regurgitate the same kind of thing they're doing. So, so in that context, it's, it's nicer to play John Henry Irons because, you know, like we said, outside of Shaq, it's not been done before. Mm-hmm. So I get to create it on my own. I will say I, I there's a, you know, messed up part of me who kind of enjoys the idea of playing bad. Like it's, it's always more fun to play the bad guy because you yeah. you're allowed to have more fun. Uh, like I always feel bad for Tyler because he has to be good. Like you know, Clark is a, inherently a good person. Uh, so, so yeah, it would have been more fun probably to play Lex Luthor, but but I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Definitely, definitely, and and obviously with the Superman franchise, it's enormous. It really, really is. So when taking on the role, did you have any reservations? Did you have any worries? Because I know the fans were quite, you know, scared. Uh, on how the show was going to be because of, you know, Smallville and uh, Lois and Clark with Dean Cain. Um, You know, did you have any reservations going into the franchise with, well, knowing that how much of a fan base this character has got? You know, that's a great question again, because like, you're right. And and I'm a fan. I mean, to tell, to be, to be honest with you, I've watched a lot of the the Arrowverse shows and I watched Lois and Clark and I watched the Dean Cain and Terry Hatcher series because I, because I, I I read the comics growing up. Mm. So for me, again, I I need to take a step back. I need to keep a, a distance from it. So I try not to read a lot of the blogs. I try not to like stay, you know, I stay up on social media with some of that stuff just because I feel it gets overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it, 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 it generally will not help me because then I feel like I'm going to start judging myself based on what I think other people want to see mm-hmm. rather than what I feel like I can bring. So, so for me, it was, I think if I didn't have a ton of pressure, just because I think I have really good people around me who ground me, um, you know, like my mom, I love my mom to death, but the, the last thing I could get with my mother around is an ego. <laughs> she will let you know. <laughs> she, she will slap you, you back down, you. basically. <laughs> exactly. She like, let you know who you are. But uh, so, yeah, so there wasn't a ton of pressure. I, I think, I'll tell you this. When I got cast uh, and after, you know, like before we started shooting, uh, you know, Lee, our director, and Todd, they kept saying, like, look, this is 
we we are grounding this. This is a very grounded show. It's going to have a different tone from some of the CW shows. Because obviously, I love The Flash. Like, you know, like, I, I used to watch that all the time. I thought they did such a great job. But it's a different kind of tone. And they kept saying that, you know, I, I would hear it, but I didn't really, it didn't really click. And it wasn't until um, I saw an early cut of the pilot, and I was like, oh, my God, they, they were serious. This is completely different. Um so much so that I actually got worried and I got paranoid and I, I reached out. I said, can I please record, re-record all of my books over? <laughs> because I was, you know, you know, I'm actually not in the pilot. Uh, the, the guy whose head they use in the back of the, at the end of the pilot is not even me, uh, oh, wow. which is a random, yeah, I know, a random tidbit. <laughs> it's only because um, the original costume, the guy who was in my costume, um, Warren, was is huge. Warren's like 6'8". And I am not 6'8". <laughs> so I couldn't fit that costume. So actually I had to fly someone else in to fit that and then to do uh, you know to then to be able to like you know pull up the helmet and have the reveal so so yeah i actually never shot anything from the pilot i just did voiceover stuff so it wasn't until after i was like oh this is totally different let me you know try to match the the, the tone of the show now but your character gets such an iconic and just epic introduction as captain uh, Luther, I've got to say, the internet went crazy. And what I love is all those people that were unsure about the show as soon as they saw the pilot. And I've noticed that as the episodes have been going on, literally people have found a newfound love for this show because it is, as you said, different to all the other Arrowverse shows, which I absolutely yeah. love. I, th I think it's fantastic. And it keeps the cape flying. Do you know what I mean? We should you know open arms and 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 love it for everything it is um i mean yeah. obviously you know your character gets that epic introduction i mean what was your impressions when you first got your script so so you had your sides as brad smith for the for the audition yeah. <laughs> so what was um your you know thoughts on the actual script when you read it for the first time i loved it uh, I, you know, I'm not even saying that just to be like, you know, oh, like to promote the show. I really, truly love what Todd had taken from it. You know, he said earlier on that he wanted, you know, Friday Night Lights with, you know, meet Superman. He wanted a grounded take on it. And I thought that was interesting because, you know, again, it is such an iconic franchise. Like, how do you redo it? You know, I think right now, right now we see Batman, you know, has been done many, many times. You see, obviously, we've had, what, three Spider-Man in the past 15 years, all these things. So, so the problem with comic books, uh, you know, shows or, t or movies is that a lot of the fans already know they have an idea of what they expect. So how do you, you know, flip that on the head? How do you change that? And I thought Todd's idea of bringing, bringing family into it was and making that the grounding force. I thought that was brilliant. So I loved it when I read it. And the writing, I've got to say, is just superb on this show. And, oh, you know, the take I get from it is that it tackles real life sort of struggles and it is real it really really is which is great how how far in advance do you find out what's in store for your character do you get them you know episode by episode or season by season uh that's a great question too so it depends on who you are as an actor todd will sit you down and say this is your character's arc for the season i again being a real true dork and like fan of the show i don't like knowing i like finding out as i go along so i tell him literally only tell me what I truly need to know right now, because I like reading the scripts and, and you know, finding out as we go along. So I, I just know as we go along. Mm, mm. Which, which yeah. is good, because I suppose as, as, as an actor, you're thinking in the moment and you're so when, you know, a certain storyline comes comes across, you're actually getting a genuine you know, reaction to to that, which is great. Um, so um, obviously in season two, we see a lot more of you being, you know, the sing, sing, single dad to yes. the character Natalie, yeah. which I think it's wonderful to see that relationship. I mean, how do you prepare as an actor for that, you know, with with uh, Taylor? No, that's a good, uh, that's, that's really good. So what happened with me was um, I just started talking to single dads. Or, or, or just fathers in general. Dylan helped me a lot. You know, Dylan plays General Lane. You know, I talked about him, about how it is with him raising his children, how, how his relationship with them is. I talked to another friend of mine over here, just because I'm not a father. I don't have children. Uh, but I, I wanted to understand how that worked. I will say for me, what was interesting was, you know, I, I grew up with a single mom. So I can at least understand the idea of, like, single parenting. But I think that the, the difference between, you know, John Henry Irons and a, a typical single parent is that he wasn't, he hadn't been a single parent his entire life. It wasn't until, you know, obviously his, his wife and his world, you know, uh, died. And then he came over here where he has to experience it. 
So for him, it's sort of new as well. So it's this fusion of, okay, how does Wole perceive, you know, single fatherhood and all this stuff? But, but with John Henry Irons being like, okay, how do I learn to do this? Because I've not had to do this before. So it's an interesting fusion for me as an actor. And and you work with Natalie off screen as well to develop that sort of relationship that you have on screen. Yeah, Taylor, first of all, I love Taylor. Taylor yeah. is amazing. She's so smart. She's so grounded. She's so like, she's super mature, incredibly mature. And I love her mom too. I give her props. Elaine, if you're watching, I love you. You know how much I love you. We always talk. I actually talked to her a few days ago. That's how much we talk. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, but no, I, I, here's what's funny about that. Uh, you know, when they brought her on for the episode, I think it was episode seven of season one, where they introduced that, you know, we get the big reveal that he's John Henry Irons. Um, <laughs> the sad part is, again, this is COVID time, and we're shooting in Canada. So back then, if you crossed the border, you had to quarantine for two weeks. So we could never meet. We literally first met uh, on set, and she shot pretty much her all her scenes on one day with me. And um, and and I think our first scene was a scene where, where I have to say I'm leaving goodbye or something like that. It's either that or the lowest dime. It was a very dramatic scene, and and it's like, hey, nice meeting you. So you're my kid. I'm your father. I'm about to abandon you. Let's get this emotional crescendo going. <laughs> um, so it was hard because we just physically couldn't be together because you know again mm -hmm. COVID was a thing, but she was really receptive. So her, um, myself, and um. Bitsy, we tried to do a Zoom together beforehand, just so you have like a little bit of a rapport because I feel like you need something. I don't, you know, one of the tricky parts of acting on a TV show compared to a movie is that you have people come in and out all the time. So you have to have, you know, somebody who's like, oh, this is my wife who I've been married to for 20 years, but we've never seen her on screen before. So you have to somehow <laughs> create that relationship in, in, you know, immediately and beat the audiences have to buy it. So. You know, we do the best we could, but uh, but I'm really glad that she's on full time this season because we really have bonded really well. And I see the show as well as a bit of a parenting guide, I've got to say, <laughs> uh, because I've got two li li little girls, one called Lois after Lois Lane and one called really? Cara after Cara Danvers. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, That's amazing. Um, Congratulations. I know. I'm a big Superman fan. So, uh, you know, it had to be done. So, thank goodness, we'd, uh, you know, we didn't have a boy or it would be Clark or <laughs> Kal-El or, yeah, or yeah, Lex, yeah, yeah. which, which, which uh, would, would have been your, awesome. Uh, so, so, Lois is eight years old and Kara's four. Yeah. So literally, oh, they're like whirlwinds. They really, really are. But um, I'm trying to get them to like Superman, but they keep running around the house <laughs> shouting Spider-Man. I'm like, no, no, Superman, what are you doing? You know, I'm bringing you into this world for this. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, so obviously the writing, as 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 we we, we, we said a moment ago, is, is phenomenal on this show. Mm -hmm. Do you get any sort of chance to put your input into your character um, in the way of changing things on screen? You know, uh, we're really lucky because Todd is a great showrunner. Uh, uh, Todd, and trust me, I've worked in this business for a while and I've worked with some not great people, which we'll say, we'll leave it that, like at that. And, 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 and Todd is so open to dialogue and communication. So what you're able to do is like, you know, the writers on set, which you couldn't really do on season one because again of COVID, but like, you know, we could go and you can, you can always come up to them before and say, hey, I have a thought about this. And they say, okay, that works. So they'll say, well, why don't we try this? And I say, okay. And so there's able to be a collaboration. And I think that's really, really important because, you know, obviously the writers have their perspective. And obviously Todd being the showrunner, he has a whole, you know, sort of overhead view of everything. But for us as the characters, you know, who live with these characters, we have an idea as well. And I think everything works best when we all can combine together and work for a common co for a common goal, so they, they we're we're, allowed, we're able to do that. I've changed lines, you know, just basically. <laughs> sometimes this would be because I'm like, I can't say this as a person. Like it just it just I, I my, the way my mouth moves, I can't say it. Uh, but other times, just because I feel like this um, helps the character out more. At least what we're trying to tell in this in, in the scene or the, the the actual episode. And again, they've been very receptive, so I've been very lucky. Mm -hmm. Well, it just shows on on how well the show is perceived on on screen. I mean, all the casts that I've had on my show so far have all said the same on how it's like one big family, which is great, and okay. and everyone is supportive of each other. And 
you know that produces some something magical on on screen and your character arc i've got to say from the moment of coming in as captain luther to now has been stunning it really really has and there's there's lots of action and we've seen you fighting with superman and then now fighting mm-hmm. by his side i mean how mm-hmm. crazy is it to watch the finished episodes compared to when you're filming because obviously the the effects in this is just amazing really is oh yeah Oh yeah, well, well that's the funny thing because then it's one, it's to film it. Then it's to like go in for ADR, like, you know, which is um, where you go record dialogue that maybe not might not have come out properly on the show when we filmed it or they add dialogue in. And, and, and then when you see it, it's like a real rough cut without the special effects. So it's in like temp VFX or something and it's just this cut and you're like, what is this mess? And then you see the final product, you're like, oh wow, <laughs> like, they do a great, great job. So, so yeah, it, it's... I'll tell you, you know, there have been times where you kind of just get sucked into the rabbit hole when you're filming. Because, you know, we obviously it's a heavy show. You know, it takes a while to shoot because of all the special effects and all the stuff we do. And so sometimes you're shooting so much that you just kind of get lost in it and you forget the finished product. And there have been times, like I remember when I saw the premiere of season two and I saw what Greg, Greg Smith, who, you know, who's our supervising director and producer who did the first episode of season two, when I saw what he did, like with the submarine scene and all that, like, I thought that was brilliant, Mm. you know, but it's something which, you know, you read on the page and that's one thing, but then to actually see the execution, like, oh yeah, we've got some freaking amazingly talented people work on the show. So yeah, it's, it's. Again, that's why I say I'm a fan of the show. Like, even if I was not on the show, I would truly be watching the show. And I love it. And then we talk about your suit. Uh, I've got a picture here so everyone can see your suit. Uh, Let me grab this one here with Uh good old Tyler just there. How cool is that suit? And what was it like having it on? I mean, I you know, from experience um from having to put cost costumes on with my light line of work in the past it, it's hot mm-hmm. it's not very um good with movement i mean what is that light though because it just looks amazing and that's the thing as we always joke is like how does it look does it look good on camera they're like yeah i'm like okay great because because i will tell you there have been times where where that suit oh my god we season the season finale of season one it was during a heat wave uh, 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 and it got to Vancouver, got to the low hundreds, which in Celsius, I don't know, maybe like 35 Celsius or something like that, wow. some ridiculously high amount. Uh, 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 and this is like nighttime, like we're shooting at midnight, and I am sweating. And you know, and like you know, there are layers to that suit. And it's one of those ones where you like just just just, just shoot the shot, tell me when we gotta go. I just gotta get it done. <laughs> um, but to be honest with you, most of this season has been my my stunt double Steven. He's he's been amazing. He's mm-hmm. had to do most of the work. Like if if you see a, if I have a helmet on. 95 percent of the time it's not me uh so so i have to give up to our stunt doubles who who, who are, are just our stunt crew our stunt team in general they do an amazing amazing job and they have to do a lot of that heavy lifting um but yeah is, is it cumbersome to walk in sometimes yeah just because and it squeaks <laughs> like like it's kind of funny like like you know again the finished product looks good and they put in the effects of like the boots moving but when i'm walking it's literally sometimes it's like squeak 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 oh, damn. uh but <laughs> What are we doing? Then I'm like, squeak, squeak, squeak. Okay, I'm going to go. You know, it's just... So basically like the Tin Man then from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah. 100%. And just as cumbersome <laughs> and just as awkward in person. <laughs> and I want to, I wanted to give a shout out as well to the stunt team because I think the stunt yeah. team do do an epic job. And you mentioned Steve, Steve, Stephen. I mean, how much of um, the stunts would you like to do opposed to how, how much you did? And when you're not doing the stunts, are you on the sidelines... Uh, chilling out and cheer, cheering them on? <laughs> you know, it depends on the day. It depends. Like, that That was, I think, from season one. And so, so yeah, I was there, obviously, you could see me in the suit. So we had to flip out. Um, look, I respect the stunt team. Like, I respect them so much that I know that I can't do it. <laughs> so, so there are a lot of times where, where you know, are, are there some ones I would love to do? Yes, but realistically, it's it's really hard. And they, and they make it look amazing. Um, uh, but I'm also gung-ho for anything. Like, there's, um, what was the episode? It was, I think it was 211, the one David Ramsey directed, where uh, it's it's like, oh, it's where Jonathan's bizarro Jonathan comes to the earth, and, like, uh, and uh, me and Taylor, our characters are in the cave, and, 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 and bizarro Lana comes in and all that stuff, and she, I get my behind whooped. So that was one where it was all me, because there's no... Um, um, 
suit. I did have another stunt double who like got pushed back, but you know, I'm getting my head slammed into walls, literally. I mean, obviously they're they're padded, so you know, it's not like painful, it's just annoying. And then like, you know, I'm on the ground and pe- people are stepping on my neck because, you know, that's what we have to do for the shot and all this stuff. See, those are those times when you say, you know, I respect stunt teams and I respect that they can do it and I don't need to. <laughs> yeah, they are they are the professionals at what they do. Um, if they yeah. want to jump off build, buildings and, and, and potentially get hurt, that's what they get paid for. Um, yeah. So, I mean, from, from the last two seasons, uh, obviously we've got a couple of episodes left of this season. Yes. And I've got to say, it is getting better and better and better. Each episode thank is you, top, topping you. itself and... and, and you know anything could happen in the next next two i've got to say but so far what has been your crowning moment what has been your favorite scene to shoot oh wow um that's a really good question um hmm. you know i really like i'll tell you my favorite episode rather than because there comes some scenes and some scenes actually got cut uh it was 108 it was um uh, as far as the one which I was, uh, which I was involved in, because my favorite episode actually I was not in. Uh, uh, but but the one I was involved in was one away where you know Bitsy, they, her character talked about having a miscarriage, mm. and you know, and we kind of had this bonding together of grief and really understanding. So it was, I remember we did that scene where you know um, uh, John has the like the green tip spear mm. and he's had like standing over Superman. And he's ready to kill him because his whole purpose has been, I need to avenge my wife. Like, this is what I'm here for. And I have the ability to do it. And suddenly then, you know, Lois comes in and is like, no, like, this is not who you are, all these things. And 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 that episode and that scene was really, really, well, it was hard to do just because, again, the staging of it. And like, you know, it's always camera angles and has to look good. But um, I really loved that bond they had and actually there's a scene that got cut and i really wish that there was like a it would be somewhere maybe on an extended dvd thing or whatever but um there's a scene that we had after um where we where we go outside and we just talk and 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 she explains you know about what she's been going through and what i've been going through and how you know i kind of how john henry Irons has to let it go you know you know you just have to accept like killing him is not going to solve the problem and it was, it was it was a simple scene, but it was really powerful and kind of emotional. And uh, like I said, I don't think the audience ever got to see it, uh, but that was one which I really really liked. And I also wanted to ask you, um, where did you get your scar from? You know, on the show, do we know? Are we going to see that? Here's a, another fun, uh, interesting, like inside uh, baseball kind of thing. So uh, yeah, originally it was supposed to be done in that episode of 107 where we reveal who John Henry Irons is. And it was supposed to be because uh, it was amazingly written scene. Like 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 um, Jay, who wrote that episode, I love Jay. Jay is so talented. Um, anyway, I, I don't think I'm giving anything away at this point. Like a rock was supposed to fall on me. Like 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 like, like I was supposed to physically see that evil Superman kill Lois. I was supposed to be in the room. I was supposed to be able to take right. it. It took place at different places. And what happens is, is like the rubble fall. Like 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 you know, rubble falls on me, and it literally cuts my face. And so it was going to be a different kind of take. Obviously, that didn't go. So I hear that we are going to find out how I got my scar at some point. Uh, I don't know anymore because that was the original thing. So I don't know what happened. Yeah, because the show has been renewed for season three, which everyone's celebrating, which I think is awesome. I really, really do. Literally, more seasons, the better. Um, But the next question is, have you managed to liberate any costume pieces or props from the show have you managed to take anything yeah yeah you know i ugh, i'm not the most sentimental as bad as that sounds i, I guess i uh, so i haven't taken anything uh i would like to take some of the clothes uh just because i just like free clothes <laughs> uh, uh i actually ended up buying a bunch of them on my own uh, uh i haven't taken anything yet i will tell you what I, knowing me what i'll probably do before like we end whenever we end i'll definitely steal some kryptonite some ex kryptonite uh, uh, um, uh, and something else, I don't know, maybe something from, uh, you know, now that Natalie and I actually have a place rather than living in a trailer forever, um, probably something there, but yeah, that's, I haven't taken anything as of yet, but I will. Cause <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. And I was expecting a hammer behind you on your wall. You know what I mean? And <laughs> just going, oh. They're very protective. Listen, our, our props people, we have two hammers. There's like the, the, the show one. And then there's the one we use just to toss around and it's huge right away. It's huge. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it would not be the easiest thing to steal. 
<laughs> and what would you like uh, to see for... Uh, you, you probably can't really say because of NDAs, and I think they're... The great, but the the worst things as well for anyone like myself trying to get any information. So we know that obviously season three. Do we know when filming's going to start on se- season three? Yeah, as of now, early September. Uh, uh, that, that as of now, again, things change, but yeah, mm. we start early September. And what would you like to see for your character going into season three? I mean, what would be the dream scenario? The street, you know, dream for, for, for me. You know, I really, you know, in, it was t- hinted at in season one near the end of the season that he has a sister on, on Earth Prime. Is that what it's called? The, whatever, the Earth we're on right now. So I really would like to, like, explore some of that and explore the history of what happened to John Henry Irons on this planet. Because, you know, they said, like, he got killed under mysterious circumstances on those things. So I'm hoping that we actually get to find out how that occurred. Because I, I love to expand on see like you know what his family life is like you know what I mean. Obviously, we expanded with Taylor and, and Natalie being on the show, which is great. So I'm curious to see maybe how how far that goes. Mm. And the great thing about the show I really like is that there's no such thing as a small character. Literally, uh, you know, you've got an ensemble of of storylines and and characters, and I think the way they write it is fantastic because, you know, it's there, there is never a dull moment. There really really isn't. Um, so mm-hmm. the next next thing I wanted. To to talk to you about was conventions because a lot of the cast are coming over to the uk very very soon um yes. being being the ones on the screen right there in front of you i mean have you ever yes. done conventions would you like to do do them over in the uk uh, you know I, i've never done them uh, uh um i, I yeah, it's, it's weird it'll be weird to do that version of it like like i feel like i would do a convention where i'd be in the audience and be like oh my god i'm seeing all these cool people so that it'd be on the other side where people looking at you would kind of throw me off a little bit uh, uh, but no, I would love to do one. I, I, I haven't done one as of yet. Uh, I, I, I do know, did, did the ones in England already happen? I, I think they no, did that occur so, this month. Um, so you've got one at the end of July uh, in Manchester. Okay. Um, and then that you've got one another I- one in Wales. And I know that they're all go, go, going to it. And I'm really surprised that you haven't done a convention because you were in the Vampire di- Diaries, which literally... Can I just say, I mean, personally, I don't watch it. I know that it's got a massive fan base, and I watched a Jeez. clip, and I've got to say, your accent is very good in it. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, thank you. It was, <laughs> my, my characters always speak in weird ways. Uh, that, that's, oh, that, that's not the actor thing for me. I, the way I approach a character is the way they talk uh, uh, informs the way they think, which informs the way they act. So I first have to figure out how a, how a character speaks to like, get into the character. Um, but yeah, yeah, I know. Even with Vampire Diaries, I never did it. Hey, to be, you know what it is, Brian. To be honest with you, like, I, I love this. I love the idea of playing and playing different characters. But I'm also, in some ways, like, kind of, I'm not like a private person. But I kind of like, again, I separate it. Like, like it's, mm. like, it, I'm used to it now. But it's even weird sometimes where, like, you know, people come up to me on the street and like, hey, aren't you like, aren't you Arcadius from Vampire Diaries? Aren't you stealing all these things? And I, it just, it throws me because I don't see it like that. Like, it's just a job. I take mm. it very seriously and I appreciate it, but it's just, I don't know, it's weird. So I, I probably should do more. I, I have this, I don't know, this but, weird but, thing in my head but about the thing it. Is, but the thing is, you're right, right in saying it's, it's, it's a job. So you don't owe anyone anything really um you know there are actors out there that like to just work and and would like to have a life of their own do you know what i mean and i think some fans yeah. especially when you're out and about can be quite scary i think i think um jordan was saying to me that he had an interaction with someone that followed him like for quite a while <laughs> And my attitude is, is that if I see someone famous in the street, I will let them get on with their day because conventions yeah. are a good way where you can actually go and meet them and it's been arranged and you can get your autograph and, and your picture, but you can let them get on with their daily daily tasks. Uh, but yeah, Wale, yeah. you've been great. It's been lovely to have, have you on and I cannot wait for the rest of the season. Uh, two episodes. I can't believe it's two, but obviously, fing- fingers that. crossed. Filming September time um, is is going to be epic. I cannot wait. Uh, but thank you so much. Keep safe and stay super. Hey, hey, you too, Brian. Thank you so much for having me on. And listen, I we appreciate the support, and for you, not just for me, but honestly, from all the fans. I know, I know the fans have been a little stressed about the delays, about airing delays. I know, I know, we all know it should get worked out for season three. So, seriously, we appreciate the support.